Hello friends, welcome to Joy of Life. So before we proceed with this episode, what I would like to tell you is that if you have not seen the system design introduction video, wherein we have discussed about the architecture of this mini project that we are building, I would highly recommend you to check the same. I will leave a link to the description as well so that you can click, check the same and then get back onto the video. So here I have done quite a bit of refactoring to this service over here. And also we have defined the requirement in some of the cases. So to start with, what we did was uh, previously in URL class, we were saving just the URL and the created time, right? So in this URL class, I have added a bunch of new fields. So as you can understand, a content of the URL might change over time. So we should allow reprocessing of the URL, say after seven or 10 days, right? And uh, that's why what I have done, I have introduced a new field called last process. So created date will be first time and it won't ever change. And last processed is when is the last time this URL has been processed. And also the number of time this URL has been processed will be stored in an integer over here. And if you also look carefully, the content type of a URL is not going to change. Right, a HTML URL is least likely to become a JPEG or a PDF, right? So we can store the content type. So these are the five things we are storing. So since we are talking about a threshold of seven or 10 days, so I've introduced a new property, which will tell us how many number of days we should allow a URL to be reprocessed, right? So apart from that, what we need, we need to know this URL has been processed earlier and if it is processed in less than seven days or not, right? So in our URL repository, we have added a new method over here called the find by URL, which will return you a URL object. So it's going to query the database um, based on the URL that it you pass. And since uh, this is unique, you will, will end up getting a single URL, right? And uh, most of the changes comes to our service class. See, if you remember in our service class previously, this was the method and uh, it was doing two things, right? It was connecting and getting the content type and then uh, parsing the content type and then looking into the map. It was having a lot of responsibility, right? And uh, since we are now storing the content type with us for some of the URLs that's coming from the DB, we don't need to do this part. This raw content type, we can directly get it from the DB. So what I did is I split this method into two methods. So over here, I have one method called get content type, which is actually going to connect to the URL and uh, make a head request and get the content type. And this method over here, the one at the bottom, get topic by content type, which it's, it's going to take your content type, split it, and then look into the map and it's going to return you the topic going to impact our business logic so in our business logic what we are going to do is basically first we'll go and check in the database that we have this url or not if the url is not there then our flow remains the same right but in case if we have the url in the database in that case what i'll do is i will get its last process time and add the configured number of days right this is the number of days that we have configured in our properties file and we are going to see if it is greater than the current millisecond. So we are converting all this into millisecond first. So we are getting the time, last process time and getting the time, which will give me a millisecond over here. And uh, this operation over here will also re return me a millisecond. So seven days as millisecond is what we'll get from here and we'll add it to what we have. And if it is greater than our current millisecond, that means this URL has been processed within a week. And in that case, we are not going to do anything. We are just simply going to log it and return. If not, what we are doing is we are setting the URL, the object that we have received as the existing URL object. And we are getting the content type of it. So we don't need to connect to the URL to get the content type. We can directly set the content type. And the next thing that we need to do, irrespective of we are setting this or not, is to set the last process time and increment our set times process, right? So we are doing that. If our content type is still empty, then what we are going to do is we are going to go ahead and uh, get the content type. So we will do all that operation that is required. So we are going to connect to that URL with head method and do the needful. For the same URLs, we don't need to 
do this costly operation so for all the existing urls we don't need to do this network operation which will save us a lot of time right we are getting the topic and again if the topic is empty we can't do anything about it we are returning otherwise we are extracting the topic and uh, not much change here so we are going to set the content type and we are going to send it to the kafka and save it to the database so since we are done with the basic code level refactoring as you have seen in the service class that we have done a lot of refactoring and all now we need to use the thread pool in order to enhance the performance right so now let's go ahead and um, understand how we can pick a thread pool for spring boot application basically it's very easy what we need to do so we just need to perform a bunch of steps over here so it starts with um, our application first we have to enable async over here just to tell the application that we'll have async uh, methods over here and then what we need to do is we will go ahead and create a package config package and then we are going to create a class inside it so let's call it url processor thread pool config so we are going to go ahead and create this class we need to put the annotation that it's a configuration class we need to create a bean over here and that bean is going to be a thread pool task executor bean so let's uh, put this annotation and we are going to give a name to it as well so let's call it um, url processor okay so what will this do is it will give me an executor and let's call it url executor bean so basically what we are going to do over here is to create a thread pool task executor and call it executor and it will be of the same type and now we need to set some of the parameters over here and uh, you can actually get these values from your properties file but uh, let's put it like this for now so one is the core uh, pool size that we need and let's say we are going to process 10 um, threads at a time if you see over here our service this service over here so the kind of operation that we are doing in our services uh, is io intensive so it's not going to use the cpu core as much as it's going to use the uh, io right because we are making network calls to database we are making calls over here with the head method and all those things right so it's uh, io heavy so it can go ahead and wait the threads until it get the response so we are going to keep the size to 10 and uh, we are having a max pool size let's say 100 and um, Similarly, we'll have the queue capacity configured, which is also at 100. For uh, easier debug, what we'll do is we'll put a thread name prefix. So all the thread will start with this name. So let's uh, call it URL processor thread over here. And uh, let's initialize our pool over here. And once we are done, we are going to return the executor, right? So that is all. So this is all about the configurations that we are going to do over here okay so next thing is that we need to make this method as a asynchronous method and it's a uh, very straightforward i would say so you just need to come here and tell that this method is async and you are done that's it that's all what we need to do so it's as simple as that so let's see so what i'll do is i'll quickly remove this async and show you what's happening and uh, um at the same time what we'll do over here is we'll put a log and this is just a temporary log i'm just putting it like this so we'll get the current thread and get its name okay so right now it's not async though we have the configuration but it's not async so what we can do over here is the moment we receive the request what we are going to do is we are going to catch hold of the start time and at the end we are going to subtract and send it back so we can get a fair idea on how much time it is taking okay so with that what i'll do is i'll start the application and we are going to use our jmeter in order to send the request so just keep in mind over here that what we are doing is we are saving into the database now okay 
so the data is going into the database not into the kafka topic and it's not yet async so it's going to use the normal threads so just to give you a glimpse over here so we don't have any record in the database it's kind of empty so yeah over to the jmeter application and what we'll do is we'll first clear up the result from our old runs and we are going to send out um, 10 requests over here and we are firing it now okay so the 10 request is going on as you see over here the requests are going one by one and uh, you can see the time and the latency right at the amount of time and latency so we have 1350 and all these numbers right remember this is not yet async and now coming back to the logs over here if you see the logs that we have received many urls and the time taken is 364 449 and so on until we send out the response back 1015 and again looking at the jmeter we see similar number over here as well right okay and uh, let's take a quick peek at the database as well so we are going to go ahead and select star and we can see that all this url has been inserted right blogger google wordpress cloudflare and everything right so i'm uh, going ahead and truncating the table again we don't have any data now okay sorry uh, so we don't have any data now and we are going to restart this application and we'll make uh, certain changes we'll make this async and one thing also i don't know if you have observed here or not so if you look at the logs you will see that uh, this triple this dashed line of log you will see that it's still using the new threads right normal threads and it uh, did not use the thread that we have configured in our executor right so we have given a prefix url processor thread right so let's go ahead and uh, enable the async part and let's restart the application right and um, database has been checked it's clear uh, we don't have any data in the database just to verify it once more application is uh, up and uh, what we'll go is we'll come here we'll clear this record do remember these numbers it, it will help us to compare or let this 10 records be here and we'll uh, still run this right so that will give us a fair idea on how much time it's taking so we'll run this now and once again you can see that we have received the requests and uh, 10 new requests has landed up before we move on we'll check in the database if they are inserted and we could see that it's being inserted we are good so if you look at the logs now what we'll notice is we have this url processor thread right so that means it's using our thread pool and picking up the task so for every dash lines we we are logging a lot actually so let's see where we have again dot so we can see here that thread 10 has picked this 9 has taken this 8 has taken this and so on right and if you see the request processing time it's all zero mils right so what we are doing basically is we are getting the request we are putting it putting the task into the thread and we are moving on from there we are not doing much right so even uh, if you see the response in our jmeter you will see something very similar the response time is like very less there is no latency at all right so this is how you implement um, a thread pool in a spring boot application so if you if you remember last time what we did was we had five uh, threads and we had 100 requests per thread and uh, let me clear the database once again for you so let me truncate the data over here and um, our database is empty and now if i try to send uh, this 500 request and let me clear it off so our table should be empty when we run this so if i go ahead and run this so if we go ahead and check the result over here you will see that the time has drastically gone down right we are processing in sub milliseconds now right and it's pretty much fast compared to what we had and uh, if you see over here the number of samples is also 500 means we are done with all the requests and the latency and all the numbers you could see it has improved a lot right so checking in the database uh, we can see that we have inserted 210 of course there are a few requests that has failed you can see a bunch of requests has failed uh, wherein we didn't got a response but we got the thing processed uh, in much lesser time right like if you have seen the last video we have been waiting and waiting and waiting and uh, do check out those latency numbers over here 
the latest sample average the deviation and all those right so this brings another problem in place so if you remember what we have done is we have configured a queue over here right and we have set the size to 100 and all that thing we have done so what if this instance goes down with 100 uh, threads still waiting so there is a chance that we lose all this data right so what do you think it could have been better if we have uh, taken it from a queue rather than listening from an endpoint so let me know your thoughts over here i won't uh, tell you what my thoughts are until i hear back from you so do think about this problem so let's say we have 100 urls over here and this instance goes down right the application is down so we lose everything so how can we handle that so that is one task that i'll leave it up to you to think about so yeah that's all from this video so i hope you got some fair idea and by the time you're watching this video all the codes will be in the github so go ahead and uh, download it and uh, try it out yourselves have some fun activities so what i'll do is i'll put the jmeter test and the input file as well so that you can use them as well for testing um and yeah please share with your friends let the channel grow so i am putting a lot of effort after office in so that you guys can learn and i also get to revisit a lot of the old concepts so what i'm trying next is to have this nginx configured and to show you how we can load balance this application so since we are at the enhancement mode so i thought it would be a good place to start so kubernetes and nginx are the two things that i am thinking about though it's just for your understanding purpose there is no sense of having a load balancing in your single system or to use kubernetes but again the whole intention is to learn and to improve so that we can contribute uh, better in our production or in our job eh, where we have a proper setup right so yeah that's all from this video S um, stay safe stay subscribed and uh, see you soon again bye bye